Europe's captain is Oliver Ortmann of Germany. The local hero is Steve Davis of England. Germany's Ralph Suke is the reigning US Open champion. Jeremy Jones is America's Mr. Reliable. Nick Varner's won eight world titles in different disciplines. Johnny Archer of Georgia is the new captain of Team USA. These six men in singles action coming up next. York Hall in the East End of London hosts the Transatlantic Tussle, the Ryder Cup of Pool. We're at the halfway stage of this four-day event. 23 matches scheduled, so first to win 12 collects the silverware. It's absolutely level at six points each. The Americans, stronger in singles, have pulled back from 5-1 down, so hopes are high. In the Team USA camp as Ralph Suge of Germany and Europe prepares to face Jeremy Jones out of Baytown, Texas. Suke, the reigning US Open champion, Jones yet to win a major title. Let's join your commentators, Jerry Forsyth and Jim White. And battle will commence here this evening, day three. Well, we're halfway there and there's absolutely nothing in it. 12 matches in the books and nothing to live on between these two terrific teams. Europe six, USA six, the first team to 12 and it looks like this one's gonna go right down to the wire. You'll be looking at midnight tomorrow night before you're gonna know the winner of this one. And Jerry Forsyth alongside me. Jerry, what a match that last one was with Steve Davis and his partner Nick Vandenberg up against Varner and Archer. That was gorgeous. It all came down to one shot, one obviously very nervous shot. Steve Davis gave it up to Nick Vandenberg. But now we've got two great players, Ralph Suke, Jeremy Jones. Ralph Suke just named Player of the Year by Pool and Billiard Magazine. Jeremy Jones, solid Race as a rock. Nothing First shakes rack, the boy. Europe, well, Ralph has won the lag, and he'll be kicking things off here. It's a race to five racks for the all-important point awaiting the winner. The Kaiser will have to take control of this match early. Try to park that white in the middle of the table. The wing ball into the bottom right corner. There it goes. Well, white ball got to the center of the table a bit unconventionally, but at least it wound up where he needed it. He has a great shot on the two ball. There's another shot. Another look at the break shot. As you can see, the cue ball gets kicked down table by the six, but comes right back up to the center of the slate. This is a dynamite break to start things off here, Jerry. Two, three, everything in the open. I don't see any problem areas whatsoever for Ralph. What a dream start. Yeah, it looks like his toughest shot, if you can call it that, will be getting from the five to the six since they're so far apart, but shouldn't present him a problem given that he gets handsomely on this three ball. And what a difference a year makes. At this stage last year, the scoreline read 11-1, and Europe was playing for their lives. Now, 6-6. Well, they've gained respectability back, there's no question, but they want to go one step further. Well, they put the right guy out there to begin their singles competition for the evening. They just don't get much better than Ralph Suke. This is a man who really works on his game. Became dedicated to pool as a very young man. Puts a tremendous amount of work into perfecting his stroke. And you certainly can't question this guy's strategy, can you? Well, he's nicely on the five, and what he wants to do here is just draw the cue ball back just past the bulk line, we call it or the string. He's got to get the other side of it though. Well, only just. Should still get this though, Jerry. True, that angle a bit more acute than the one he wished for. <clears throat> but he can still drive this cue ball to center table and that's all he needs. He can actually be on either side of the brown seven and still come up well on that eight ball. But this could have been easier. Looks a little tougher from that camera angle, certainly in early days, so you know the pressure's gonna be very intense out there. And Ralph has to cope with that. 
How successful he is with this shot will determine in large part how confident he is for the rest of this match. This ball going in cleanly would be a real boost to his ego. It's down, it's clean. Ralph Souquet has climbed the biggest hill he's faced so far and that should really help him out. That'll boost your confidence. Yeah, it's a real good shot that, because that was missable and never looked out. Just needs to drag this cue ball off the seven ball, down to the foot rail and back out and avoid the nine ball. He does not want to strike the nine ball. Stays well clear of the nine ball, nearly straight in on the eight. He'll just pull the cue ball back towards him a little bit to play the nine in the opposite corner pocket. Good confidence striking of the cue ball. That's always an indication that your man's ready. And for the European hopefuls, Ralph looks set, parks the nine, and Europe opens accounts here. One nil over USA. It's a race to five, remember, but they're off the mark. Well, that shot on the six ball really sent a message to Jeremy's side of the table. Jeremy knows now he's got to uh, close out his racks the way Ralph closed out his. Mind you, there's not a lot Jeremy could do there. That was a break and finish from Ralph. So Jeremy is yet to get out of his chair, but he will be breaking here in rack number two. That's right. That means Jeremy knows he has to stay at the table here. He needs to make a ball and get a shot. He wouldn't want to turn this table back over for sure because then Ralph would take this game and be breaking in the third game. The reigning U.S. Open champion is Ralph Souquet, and all he can do now is sit in his chair and see if his competitor can respond in kind. You never want to wish any bad luck on your opponent. But by the same token, you want to get to the table. Jeremy puts the wing ball in the corner pocket. The cue ball gets kicked out of the center of the table but winds up in fair position for this one ball. It looks like he'll be able to have a clean shot here. You can see Whitey wants to park itself just solidly in the center of the table. And then the two ball comes up and says, ah, let's put you over on the side. Not quite as easy a layout as the one that Ralph had. The two ball he has to avoid being hidden by the five. The three ball he has to avoid being hidden by the six. So he's got to uh, be a, show a bit of precision with this white ball. It almost looks like he wants to take it down the same side of the table the one and two are on. So that means that cue ball control is going to be a little bit more imperative. Just take the cue ball up the side of the table, the same side that the one and two are on. He has to hit this shot with some pace. Well stroked. Now he's got a problem though, Jerry. Well, he does. He's come up a little bit short, but at least he has a shot. He, this guy is a master at the cue. He, he can drag this ball two rails possibly and get back over that side of the table. He may even play short side shape on this one, Jim. You know what wouldn't surprise me? Wouldn't Safety. surprise me to see him go all around the table here. Striking off one, two, three, and trying to get back over for the three. That's certainly an option. Of course, if he really dislikes the shot, he's close enough to draw off of that two ball, park the uh, cue ball behind the five, and play a safe. Have Ralph kicking. We'll know when he lines up here. Uh, he's going for the shot. There's the shot you called. He just came out on the short side of it. Yeah, he played it with a little too much bottom. To me, it looked like it was straight top. But he can still get through to this three ball, though. That's the important thing. If he slots this in, gets the cue ball back into the same area it is now. 
great shot. That's that's the work of the rack over now. All the clusters and tie-ups are gone. Now Jeremy's just got to play pool, connect the dots. He looks rock solid as well. He's had a couple instances that if there's any nerves in that back arm, they would have been exposed. He requested that the cue ball be cleaned. Michaela Tav accomplishes that task for him. Now he steps to the table to measure the orange five ball. Jeremy draws the cue ball back just a little bit to get the right angle on the six. He has to go back down to where near where he was standing to get on that uh, brown seven ball. These are just shots that you just cue. You just hit them, let the cue get through the white, and let the spin of the cue ball naturally take the white to the area you want it to go. Not quite as much bottom again into the white as he would have liked. It's very similar to the shot that Ralph played earlier, just to the opposite corner. Up and down the table. Go back out to the center of the slate. And he has a great shot on the eight ball to finish this rack out. And he has matched Ralph's effort. This has been a great performance from both of them in the opening two racks here, firing rockets at each other. Jeremy Jones deposits the nine in the corner pocket. He's got us tied up now, one to one. Somebody's got to get to five games first. Welcome back. Jeremy Jones now leading 3-1. Suke missing all sorts of chances, especially in rack three. Imperative for Ralph Suke to try and complete a rack and finish here. He can ill afford to go 4-1 behind. And Ralph would like to copy what Jeremy just did. Jeremy slided three balls in on the break, left the other six on the table in a simple road map to follow. Ralph not nearly as fortunate He's made a ball, but the one ball is in a tough position. He may, there's a shot, another look at the break. You can see he's hits him with plenty of force, but the rack comes apart kind of sloppy. You see how the cue ball develops down at the wrong end of the table. He's nowhere near the center of the table where he would like to be. And also, Jerry, it didn't look like it was kicked down to that end either. No, he lost it. And he's in no position from which he can attack here either. And this is familiar territory right now for Ralph. He's been spending a lot of time in his chair watching Jeremy dish up. And he comes to the table with nothing more than containment on his mind. Containment indeed. He's got the seven and the nine nearby the one. Might be able to hide in there. It looks like that's his shot. If he can just play this slowly and just get that one ball past the nine, the cue ball should stay in behind both seven and nine. But again, he would mean having to slow roll it. And you can see where he's cueing from. It doesn't get any more awkward than that. No, right over the pocket. And you're right, he has to slow roll this shot. And at the same time, he's got to remember that something's got to hit a rail after contact. Either an object ball or the cue ball must strike a rail. Sends the one to hit the rail. But he hasn't hidden Jeremy nearly as well as he wished. Jeremy has at least an edge of this one ball that he can hit and play safe right back. Yes, Ralph might find himself in a little bit of trouble when he comes to the table again. Jeremy doesn't really have to do much here. Just slap the... Edge of the one ball, send it off the rail behind the seven and nine. I'll leave the cue ball on the other side. 
just like that. Used the one ball to stop him, although he would have liked to have the one ball further off the rail behind the seven. Ralph again comes to the table with defense in mind. Just checking he's holding his finger where he can get the cue ball to. Just wants to be able to see whether or not he can get to that one ball off that cushion. And again, he's cueing from right underneath another one. Ralph's going to be looking for the nail clippers here pretty soon. At three to one score in favor of Jeremy, he definitely does not want to turn this table back over. With an offensive shot in available, he wants to put Jeremy in some sort of trouble here. Well, jo sorry, Jerry, I was going to say Johnny Archer told us uh, before the outset here that Jeremy was basically he refused to go out for dinner and wanted to spend time on the practice table to get ready for this. And well, there's an old saying that chance favors the prepared man. And right now, Jeremy Jones looks like he has just been a little better prepared for this match than Ralph. Jeremy, certainly a player not afraid of work. In a pretty confident situation right now. Ralph has to have a miracle to come out of this. Ralph obviously not believing that he can get through to that one off that left side cushion now has to take the long path to the one ball, and that means the hit will be crucial. I think he likes his odds of getting safe better in this direction, but he's not going to do it. He's giving up ball in hand, the last thing in the world he wanted. Remember, with ball in hand, Jeremy puts that cue ball anywhere he wishes. Well, so far in this match, apart from the opening break where Ralph secured a ball on that break and then dished up to go one nil ahead. It's been all Jeremy Jones and he has been in complete control of this match. And he certainly doesn't look like letting go. No, and really, this is an easy layout for Jeremy with ball in hand. He just has to move the cue ball across the table off the one for the two, draw back for the three. And after that, it's really simple. The six and seven are both parked by pockets, which will leave him Easy access to the eight and then to the nine. Just showing you, he wants to get that cue ball out into the middle of the table off this one. Be able to draw off that side cushion in slotting the two to the bottom right to bring the cue ball back the top end of the table for the three. He needed it further than that. That's no good. He now has a much tougher shot than the one he had originally considered. This angle's pretty tough. And getting back on the three is no piece of cake either, Jim. Yes, right now, if he does elect to go for this ball to cut it down to the corner pocket, his problem is going to be taking the cue ball off the cushion and avoiding the side pocket, he's going to be heading right back towards it. That's a great shot. Well done, Couldn't Jeremy. have cued that any better. Such a thin cut on the two to pull that cue ball on the other side of that side pocket. Couldn't have struck that any better, Jerry. Yeah, he came up short on that two ball, but he pulled himself out of it. Now he has to make sure he doesn't overcook his position on this pink four. He would like to be right out in the center of the table for the pink four. This looks all right. He just wants to get the left-hand side of the table. Yeah, he can draw straight off of this four. Come right back up to the left-hand rail as you view the table. And that's where the six ball is waiting for him. The only danger here, though, if he does that, he doesn't want to leave himself straight on that six. And for that reason, he may even try and get that cue ball back out into the middle of the table on the right-hand side of the nine as we look. 
This is just a matter of how he feels. If he can get that cue ball very close to that left cushion, that'll be his choice. Right, whatever he does, he has to avoid being blocked by that nine ball. He needs that cue ball near that cushion. Well, it looks like it's going to be okay. He's got enough angle to be able to, oh, he's got plenty of angle. He can get that cue ball out for the seven easy. Drag draw the cue ball across the table so that it lays between the seven and the eight. A couple of slow pace shots here to get him to the nine ball. And it's looking a lot like Jeremy Jones is going to be breaking for the match. And it's been a rock solid performance from Double J, this one up against the reigning U.S. Open champion. And it has been all one-way traffic. The strength of the Americans in the singles play has become evident. <laughs> Jeremy Jones on the hill. Ralph Suke all the way down at the bottom with only one bead on his side of the string. Well, as we would have expected, another packed house here at York Hall. It has been the site of the Moscone Cup for a number of years now, become the home of the Moscone Cup. The Americans come over each and every year with one purpose in mind, and that's to maintain a cup they have held for seven of the previous eight years. Yeah, directly behind Jeremy there in our shot is the U.S. Marines. They come every year to back their boys. And for those of you that may not know, this Black cup is named after an American pool playing legend, the late Silver. Willie Moscone. And wouldn't he be proud looking down from pool playing heaven on how his American boys are holding that stars and stripes high. Jeremy Jones with what he hopes will be the final break of this session. He's come up dry. He's left them all up on the surface of the table. And I think Ralph may be able to get through to this one ball too, Jerry. I'm right behind this from my commentary position. And it looks like that one ball is available. I believe it is, Jim. His problem is he has to slow roll it to stay down for the two. He can't drag across the table because of the three ball. That's what he's considering right now, how to get position on that two. He's queuing it low. He may be going for the drag. Indeed, he's trying to drag over to the short side shape. Great shot. Well, he needs two breaks against the service, and this certainly is one chance. Studying the two, he wants to find out exactly where he's going to wind up with that cue ball for the three. Jim, I just don't see any problems here for him. He ought to cruise through this rack. The only problem is that he knows he's under a lot of pressure. His back's against the wall, and he can't afford any mistakes. Jeremy is in the comfort zone, knowing, of course, that he's going to get at least one more break, even if he doesn't get out of his seat here or in the next break that goes to Europe. That's the beauty of having that 4-1 lead in the alternating break format. Very true. Ralph has to put that all out of his mind right now and just get this job done. He'll put a little right-hand English on this ball, spin back up toward the center of the table, just wants to miss the eight ball. Wow, he played that awfully close. There's not a lot of quit in this man, is there, Jerry? There's none. An extremely disciplined player. 
a former world champion. And in fact, the year that Mika Immonen won it, last year, Ralph was the player he beat in the final. He's the current U.S. Open champion, won that title in September. Defeated a good friend of yours, Alex Pagulayan, in the finals of that tournament. And he showed a lot of character in that one as well because it went right to the last rack. He's some performer, the man at the table. If there's anyone you'd want in your corner, he'd certainly be very high on the list. Even if the Americans had to choose a player, I think he'd be high on that list. He's chosen to play the seven in the side pocket. With a simple stop shot, he'll slide slightly down table toward the eight, and that'll give him the angle he needs to come right back up table for the nine ball. Well stroked, he's only got to control his speed now. Doesn't want to go too far and wind up on that 50 yard line. Right in line with the line of the next shot. Beautifully played. Ralph Suke is gonna get one back. Four to America. He also has the benefit of knowing that he's going to be breaking off in the next with a chance to make it 4-3. So Suke is still in with a big shout here for Team Europe. Welcome back to your call in this year's Moscone Cup where Team Europe are on the verge of possibly losing a lead, which they have enjoyed since this event started three days ago. And the man of the moment, Ralph Suke, he was in control of this match until this foul, where he double hit the cue ball there. The score line at that stage was Five one seven, rack apiece, and Ralph had Jeremy Jones to on two fouls. And since then, it has completely turned on him like a rabid dog. And it's down to Suke to try and get control back. He has the opportunity now to get within one. If he can go through this rack, the score will lay 4-3, and then he has to hope that Jeremy comes up dry on his break and gets another opportunity. He slotted a couple of balls in. Let's see if he'll have a shot on the one. He's put three balls in. He's got a shot on the one. This is exactly the opportunity that he requires. Another look at a superb break from Ralph Suke, the Kaiser. Got everything into that one. Three down on the break. And sitting pretty on the one. Now you see why it's so important to leave that cue ball near the center of the table. That way you have pretty good odds of starting off with a shot. And now he's even on the right side of the one to be able to slide over for the next shot on the three ball. His toughest shot will be getting off the three back down table for the four. And if nothing else, Jerry, this is going to put a lot of pressure on Jeremy Jones. If Ralph can complete the out here and get the score line back to 4-3, he turns it right back to double J and puts the heat on him. Well, Jeremy's watching this rack awfully closely. No one more aware of the situation than he. He does still enjoy the lead, however. And this shot is critical. Ralph Suke is starting to look good again, just like the man that started this match out and in prime position again. Well, it gives you a good feeling when you erase three balls from the table on the break and only six are left. Especially when you can see the lowest one still on. A normal stroke brings the ball back out to near center table. He'll be able to move the cue right up and down the table for the eight. He can even draw it back if he wishes. The first match of the evening, the first match of singles play since yesterday evening. The Americans dominant yesterday, winning all three singles matches. 
And Europe knows they're under it right now because the Americans historically have owned the singles part of this competition. Ralph Souquet playing with his normal pace now. Comfortable at the table. Back up the table, slightly off the cushion. He'd like to be further off that rag than that. I remember, remember the problem that the rag gave Steve Davis a little bit earlier. A real test of cueing here. Got to stay very still, hit the center of the white. And that's usually the result. Nine down, Ralph Souquet has pulled one more back. The score line now reads four to the USA, three to Europe. And Marcus Schmidt has something to cheer about. Well, never before has Jeremy needed a good break and a good split of the balls than Back right now. USA to break. I guarantee you there's probably five pairs of Americans' eyes upstairs in the practice room all glued to the monitor watching this. And that's assuming they're not out here watching it in person. Wing ball goes in, three ball went in the corner pocket and he's got a long shot on the one ball. The problem, the four seven. You see the three heading right at you. It falls in the corner pocket. Another look at the split, Jerry. And as you've already noted, the only area of concern is at the top of the table where the four and the seven are glued together. Top left of your screen as we look. But I can also tell you that if they do offer a combination, that could be the out for Jeremy. It looks very close. Well, I think the seven ball is going to be outside the pocket on that combination. I do believe he's going to have to play a duck somewhere along the line here. And those ducks can play. He's got a shot here on this too. If he elects to try and slice this into the side pocket, it almost looks like the angle, the natural angle, could take that cue ball down towards the four and the seven. A very risky shot. But again, if he plays this two into the side pocket, the natural angle of the cue ball is going to come right here. Risky, risky. Jeremy gambles, and he's missed the ball. But in his favor, he didn't break up that cluster. So he's left that problem on the table for Ralph. Had he broken those balls up, he'd have been in some real trouble right now. You know the difference is though, Jerry, it's because he overcut that two. Had he not overcut right. the two, as you see here, that two's gone wide, he would have dislodged the seven and the four there. Yeah, you'll get no complaints from the Kaiser though. He's delighted to get out of his chair and not be offering his hand in congratulations. Still the same problem confronts Ralph. The yep. four and the seven still in jail. And there's no realistic way to break those balls apart on this shot. He's got to be thinking about what he's going to do with that four ball when he gets there. I think he'd just like to be able to get that cue ball back close to it to at least give him a few better safety options. And that means avoiding all the traffic in pocketing this too. I don't see a good safety option here. Uh, there's no safety option. The problem is the five ball. That's the one that's tough to avoid. In pocketing the two, the natural path for the cue ball is going to be heading right down towards the five. It's just a question of whether or not Ralph can avoid it. Well, 
Well, he's developed a plan. Looks like he's playing a lot of top. I think he's. Well, he's missed the five. He has indeed. He's come back down where he can just nip the side of that four ball and send the cue ball way back up table. That's not too bad, Jerry. As you said, he's got the seven now for a bumper, just clipping the left edge as he looks. If he can get that cue ball back into this area in behind the eight, there's a very good chance that he may well leave Jeremy Jones snookered. Wants to get the cue ball right back into that area. He might even try and take it a little further down. But either way, it's a matter of keeping that eight between the cue ball and the pink four. The thinnest of contacts here is what he needs. Can't blame him for taking his time. He wants to leave all the energy in the cue ball. Transmit nearly none of it. You know, the way he's looking right now, ball. I wonder if he can see enough of that pink to be able to hit it dead on and leave the cue ball there. Because well. he's he's getting down and looking very close and I mean, he wouldn't be looking at anything other than that option. Everyone expected this to be a very tight-fisted, long, drawn-out affair, and it's turning out to live up to all expectations. Both teams put their best foot forward, champions all. And we're going to be here till the bitter end. Well, he's left a lot of distance for Jeremy to try to cr cross here on this shot. And Jeremy also would like to hit this ball very, very thin. Use the seven ball as a bumper and bring the cue ball back up and hide it on this end of the table. Jeremy also knows that if he doesn't win this rack, Ralph breaks in the next. And he becomes second favorite in this match. Well, he's separated the five from the seven now. If he can get hidden, he is not. He wanted to be hidden so that he could get ball in hand with an open shot. Instead, he's left Ralph a full ball hit. So Ralph can, can move, maneuver those balls. Tough shot here. But if he does fancy it, a bit of a snooker safety where he tries to bank that pink ball right back up the middle of the table and leave the cue ball down in behind the seven in that area. An Im impossible looking slice. No, there's no way, not from where he's cueing. This is about a three quarter ball hit or just more on the right hand side. And just bank that four ball right up ideally just past the side of the eight. He's taking a look at several options that he doesn't like. Cue ball. And we'll try that again. Cue ball down to the four. <laughs> well. My telestrator is just a little wonky right now. That's how tough the shot is. Can't even telestrate it. And just take the cue ball softly off the cushion and right over in behind the seven. But again, this has to be judged perfectly and bring that four ball right back up the center of the table down towards the nine. It looked like he might have been going for the offensive option, trying to bank that four ball back. The way that he played that, he was trying to bank that four ball in the corner. That's just how tough the safety was. But he sure didn't do too bad. He's left half a chance here for Jeremy, but half a chance at best. Yeah, Jeremy has a severe cut into the lower left corner pocket. 
And he has to worry about the scratch in the lower right corner pocket as well as getting position on the five ball with a nine ball that could block him. Now, how much courage does Jeremy Jones need to muster to knock this pink in? Well, obviously he doesn't want to turn this one back over. Could be a match winner if he gets it. He's bobbled the shot. He could get fortunate on the lead. Well, not the toughest shot in the world, not the easiest shot in the world. Well, to Ralph Suke right now, it's looking a lot more like the toughest shot than the easiest. But that's the effort from Jeremy Jones. Wasn't miles away, but he sure hasn't left Ralph anything easy. But this is nothing more than pressure out there. And both these players are feeling it. In the practice room, he'd slide this ball in easily. He can use the nine ball to stop the cue ball as it comes back up table and gain position on the five. Well, I think he has to take it on too, Jerry. Oh, absolutely. He needs, he needs this break. He needs to bring it back 4-4 and be on the hill. I think you said it best a couple days ago. You don't back your way into championships. You shoot your way in. And this is a chance right now for Ralph Suke to shoot his way right into a deciding rack. Fortunate that that four ball is just off of the rail. Gives him a little more room for error. What a shot. Great shot. Used the nine ball to stop the cue ball right there in position for the five ball. You could hear a pin drop in the arena before Ralph played this ball. Everybody knew the importance of him getting it. And now he's just five more away from being able to break for the match. He's on a slightly clumsy angle to come back, come forward and, and hit the six ball, but he's going to be able to cheat the pocket enough to do that. There you go. He can draw or follow his way across the table for the seven. And when Suke trailed 4-1 in this match, who would have thought we were going to be looking at a possibility of 4-4 with Ralph breaking? Nobody gave up hope. Especially those gentlemen. You won't be seeing either one of those later on this evening. They'll be in play, called into action tomorrow. Just a few moments ago, it looked like Jeremy Jones had this set well in hand. Now it's slip sliding away. A very concerned Texan. But you know, Jeremy's the kind of guy that uh, lets this sort of situation fall off his back. He'll, he'll wait to get to the table and take his opportunities. No steady cueing. And this is nothing more than drawing this eight ball back. Not far off the position the cue ball holds now to leave the nine top left to have shared the first eight racks.
The fighting qualities of Ralph Souquet are on display here in Bethnal Green. From 4-1, he turns the tables on Double J and pulls the scoreline back to four apiece. The ninth rack, the decider, Ralph Souquet will be breaking to try and keep European hopes flying high. All this work to come down to one rack of nine balls. High drama in York Hall. And Jeremy looking pretty composed as is Ralph Souquet, but I can tell you they both got the butterflies flittering around in the stomachs, but what a shot on the four ball here from Souquet. Well, remember that break where he slotted three balls in and <laughs> one shot? That's what he needs right now. You don't see many score lines being brought back from 4-1. Not with the alternating break format here. And Suke has done just that. Now, he's got to convert it into victory. Otherwise, it's all been for nothing. Jim, he couldn't ask for anything better than that. He's got a great shot on that two ball. I just looked at Jeremy Jones and he was shaking his head, Jerry. I think he sees it too. Ralph's plotting out the entire table right now. He wants to know exactly where he's going to go from shot to shot. And I think Sid Waddell really says it best, Jerry. When times like this, it's cometh the moment, cometh the man. What he's worried about is being blocked by the nine ball from his next shot. If he were to try to draw, drag the cue ball across the table, he might run into the five, so he's going to avoid that option. Looks like he's going to settle for a bit of a longer shot. No, he did draw drag the ball. He's got the perfect angle on the three. Just needs to roll this in. It's going to take the cue ball up towards the four. All those hours of practice all come down to this. It's all about muscle memory and letting the composure and the concentration take over. Yeah, but when your arm's this tight, this slow roll that he's got to pull here <laughs> gets to be a pretty tall order. Jerry, it's like a six foot putt downhill. You just put the best stroke on it you can. then pray it doesn't hit a spike mark. Yeah, you know, the tangent line does take him rather toward the pocket, so he's going to put some draw on it to bend the cue ball away from that scratch. Just got a little bit of angle here, too. That's going to help him get closer to that five. Mind you, it's not much, is it? He's going to be punching this in with a bit of speed. Yeah, this shot has to be firm. Remember, he doesn't want to be straight in on the five either. He needs some angle so he can get back out off of the rail for the six ball. Times like this, you know, I sometimes wonder if we could take the player's heart rate. We'd probably wonder how he was still standing. I mean, ours have jumped up a few. Just needs a slight punch here. Strike the ball very slightly below center. Let it slide into the five ball, bounce off the rail. Come out for the six. The green six waits for him in the center of the table. He's perfect, Jerry. You can't ask for it any easier. Jim, he's just trying to place that cue ball exactly where he wants it after this shot so that he can get down for the nine ball. He's got a large area of position to work in on both the eight and the nine. 
And leaves himself the angle on this eight to bring the cue ball down towards the nine. Just depends how he wants to play it, either off the one cushion up the left-hand side of the table or spin the cue ball off those two cushions down to the right-hand side. His choice. Toughest thing about this shot is quieting the heart. <laughs> Apparently he's done that. What an effort from Ralph Suke. They can hardly believe it at 4-1 down. I think they thought it was over. They just forgot to tell the Kaiser. Ralph Suke, a 5-4 winner, and still Europe has their nose in front of the USA. The scoreline now, 7-6, and Ortman and Archer, the captains, yet to come.